is this step, is this move, is this thing I'm about to do moving me closer to my goal or away from my goal? I've said over and over again, you will not manifest anything you haven't visited thousands of times before. Is it moving closer to my vision or away from my vision, closer to my dream or away from my dream? Okay, fabulous. Well, welcome to another Manifesting Success live call. Uh, today, we are talking about all things manifesting as always. And we're going to talk about how manifestation actually works. Because there's a lot of uh, narrative out there. There's a lot of information on um, what to do, what not to do, why it works, why it doesn't. And I want to dispel some of those rumors and actually give you three key universal concepts that assures you um, that you are on the right track because there are really universal laws that lead into the law of abundance, the law of manifestation, the law of attraction. Now, the law of attraction is actually a byproduct of certain universal laws. And so what I found is these three laws that I'm going to share with you today are really key in creating the foundation for what you want to build in your life. And, and when I say build, meaning not just build all the stuff that you're attracting or they're manifesting, but really build the life where you become a manifester, which means you have dominion over energy. You hear me talk about this all the time. You know, what the reason why we step into these abilities and practice with manifestation is so that you understand how powerful you are and how much you can master your life by mastering your energy. And so when you harness that power, um, you become one with the universe. So that's really the ultimate game. Of course, people are always like, yeah, but I want the house. I want the car. I want the money. I want all that stuff. And I'm going to quote, is it Jim Carrey? I'm going to quote Jim Carrey that says, no, no, Alex Hermosi. But I think he was quoting Jim Carrey. He says, I hope you get everything you want so that you realize that none of that stuff matters. And so that's kind of my wish to you is I want you to understand what really matters. But in learning to attract and manifest those things in your life, you get to that point where you understand what really matters. So we're going to dive into the three keys, um, key universal laws that are really the precursors to the law of attraction and the law of manifesting and uh, manifesting and um, really uh, sheds light on how manifestation actually works. What I want to also invite you to do is prepare your questions, um, prepare your stories and be ready to share them. You know, what works for you? What doesn't work for you? Where are you stuck? And what are the what ifs um, that you'd like to share with us? And um, let's play with that together. This is an opportunity for us to really dive in and, and do some do some coaching um, if you were on Facebook, I encourage you to come join us in the Zoom room. Uh, this is where the action happens. So hi, Dave. <laughs> Great to see you here. Um, so join us. The link should be somewhere in the Facebook group. And um, you, can, you can come in here and, and ask your questions and interact with us. So the three universal laws that are precursors to the law of attraction. The first one <clears throat> is the law of assumption the law of assumption. Now, the law of assumption states that you have to come with an assumption of an existing condition or experience or that thing that you want to create in your life. When you harness the power of assumption, meaning you've already assumed it's taken care of, you already assume you're going to get into a relationship, you already assume you're going to get that dream job, you already assume that you're going to make the money that you require or that you desire. You already assume you're going to get that dream home. When you come with that assumption, which really ultimately means that you have a deep belief in that thing that you desire, that's when your dreams come true. That's when you're able to manifest. 
I've said over and over again, you will not manifest anything you haven't visited thousands of times before. That's kind of a shortcut to the law of assumption, meaning fill your life with that thing. The reason why people keep creating more of the same is because it's familiar. The reason why they keep attracting the same type of relationship is because it's familiar. It's, it reminds them of their dad, or reminds them of their mom, the unhealed wounds, um, the childhood traumas, all of those things that bring to us more of the same. The reason why people um, in a certain, say, social class will create that in their adult life is because that's what they're used to. You take a very wealthy person, someone who was raised you know, by parents who are multi-millionaires, they're going to be successful. It's not because their parents handed them, you know, everything. It's not because they gained a huge inheritance. It's because they were surrounded by wealth. They were surrounded by prosperity. They were surrounded by the thinking that created the results that they got in their life. Same thing with someone who was struggling growing up. They were surrounded by that. They're going to experience more of the same. So there's always a cap. Now I'll say people who are committed to personal growth and development, you know, oftentimes will push through that, that barrier, that gap, and maybe get to the next level. But it takes quite a bit to make that quantum leap and quite a bit of self-awareness and, and really that self-discipline to shift those things that have been driving their life up until now. Now, what also happens is people will look at the experience they had. And because of that experience, they're like, I want the complete opposite. But again, that's because now they mire themselves in the opposite of what they were raised in. So that experience that someone has had thousands and thousands of time, it's it's there, it's ingrained in their DNA. And, and I say that lightly because I don't believe anything is grained in your ingrained in your DNA. But it's it's kind of, you know, cellular memory of that past experience is going to create more of the same. That's the underlying belief most of us walk around with. So when we look at the universal law of assumption, we have to step into a new belief. Now, assumption kind of, you know, begets a little bit of playing, a little bit of imagination, a little bit of, of that attitude of, you know, well, of course I'm going to get my dream job or start my business or or find these these incredible contracts or buy my dream home it's just that belief that it's already done it's already done i love the prayer amen you know when we say you know whatever prayer it is and we end with amen or amen that word means and so it is that prayer in itself already exclaims an assumption whatever we pray for when we end with and so it is it's already done we assume that the universe is going to support us that everything is going to fall into place that's when we start to draw in those things that we desire in our life so that's the first universal law that supports manifestation is a law of assumption. The second law, which kind of is the maybe next step or flows into that is the law of vibration. Everything is energy, everything is frequency, everything is vibration. Wherever you vibrate at currently is what you're going to attract. If you wanna know where your vibration is, look at your surroundings, look at what the results in your life and is, look at what you've created because that's your vibration. When I have my cell phone, I've got my cell phone over there. When I dial a number, I mean, how many cell phones are there on this planet now? I have no idea, I assume, 5 billion, there's probably 8 billion people now, right? Almost 9 billion. There has to be 5 billion cell phones. Why is it that I dial a number and I can reach a specific person on this planet? Because that person is on a frequency, a vibration. Everything is on a, a certain vibration. Same thing with the radio station. You know, we've all driven, you know, had those, um, had those road trips where you've listened to a radio station and it's very clear because it's on that exact same frequency, 102.7. And as soon as I leave the area, 
I actually have to, to tune into another frequency. Now, if I'm in that area and I go to 102.8, I'm going to hear a lot of static. That's not the same vibration as that broadcast that is broadcasting from the radio station, that specific song, that specific person, that specific you know, thing that I want to tune into. It's on a different frequency. So the law of vibration says, states that you have to vibrate at that thing that you desire, the same vibration of that thing that you desire. If I want wealth, I have to vibrate at wealth. If I want love, I have to vibrate at love. If I want a family, I have to vibrate at family. If I want to help, I have to vibrate on, on, at health. And again, that's a fine tuning process, especially when you haven't lived there in the past. If, if I've never been to this, you know, I live in Orange County, this LA Orange County area, and I want to find 102.7, that, that's going to be difficult for me. That's going to be difficult for me because there's, you know, everything from FM to AM to, you know, starts, I don't know, where does it start? 500 up to a thousand. So I have to go like, you know, every little tweak. And then I have to kind of listen to it for a while because, you know, the commercials are on and the songs are on and figure out, okay, am I on this 102.7? There's a fine tuning process. And so what we have to look at is, how do I match the frequency of that thing I desire? Now, how do we match the frequency of that thing that we desire? We have to, again, mire ourselves in that frequency. We have to practice seeing it, practice thinking about it, practice experiencing, bring up the feelings of it. What would it feel like to be in that place? You know, I, I work with a lot of millionaires, very successful people, and I work with a lot of people who want to create success for themselves. And one of the things that I found is, you know, and I talk about vibration and frequency and I say, you know, well, what would, if you were a millionaire, what would you do? And, and the answers are opposite of what a millionaire would do because they haven't experienced that yet. You know, they'll say things like, well, I would buy that car, that dream car. I would take that vacation. You know, a millionaire would never spend money before they've created it, before they've had an income flow of, of money that makes money for them. They wouldn't spend frivolously. If they were a millionaire, they would be frugal. They would be conscious of every penny that goes out. They would be really conscious of the decisions they make. They would be they would prioritize investing versus spending or creating, you know, a, a, a certain lifestyle to take away the pain, maybe um, uh, temporarily or to show other people that they're doing much better than they they are doing. And so, again, fine tuning process, fine tuning process. It's about studying that thing you want. It's about being around. It's about evoking the feeling of already being there. It's about seeing it so clearly that you are now vibrating at that same frequency. It's surrounding yourself with that thing. If you have a dream home, are you driving around the neighborhood? Are you going to open houses of that dream home? So that now you can sit in there. I remember I used to work with um, youth at risk. And these are kids that have been in the juvenile system. And we were, um, I was actually part of a group that was teaching them how to be a leader and, and provide leadership development for other youth at risk. And so we had kind of this, this afternoon event, it was more of a gathering. And this young man, maybe 16 years old, you know, from, from a, an impoverished neighborhood was at this home and it wasn't an elaborate home. It was, you know, maybe a, a nice 3000 square foot home with a pool, you know, backyard, just kind of a middle-class, um, you know, pretty decent home, but definitely different from, from the neighborhood that he had, he was living in. And he was sitting out in the backyard and, you know, in a lounge chair and he's looking around and he's like, I could see myself living here. That's the law of vibration is to be able to feel it and admire yourself in it and really picture yourself. And, and I didn't follow him, unfortunately. I don't even remember his name, um, but 
I I have my suspicion that he he flipped a switch that day. He made a decision and he decided that this is the type of life that he wants to resonate with and to create and draw to him. And what that led to is a, a, a bunch of other steps that followed in order to lead him to living in a home where he can look around and say, yes, this is my home. This is my home. There was a conviction in the way he said it and that energy of I could see myself like he could literally feel what it was like to live in that home. So the law of vibration is we have to match the frequency of that thing we want. What does that also mean? You cannot bash other people who have what you want. You know, any judgment against people who are wealthy, successful, making it, it has to go away. Because when you judge them, you're judging that thing. And you will not bring to yourself anything that you feel incongruent with. So when you judge it, you know, I say, well, selfish, greedy people make money or, or thieves, you know, you have to be dishonest to make money. Well, I'm not a dishonest person. And so I may want wealth, but then I'm going to hit a threshold where now my subconscious is like, oh, you're, you're drawing that line. If you get wealthy, that means you are dishonest. And my self-conscious isn't aligned to that. So it's going to sabotage and, and bring me back down to where I can be honest and poor <laughs> or broke, you know, whatever the case is. So we cannot judge that thing that we desire. We have to celebrate it in others. It doesn't mean, you know, um, so yeah, it means we have to celebrate it in others. When someone wins, that means you can win. So that law of vibration Match the frequency of that thing you desire and it will come to you. It'll magnetize to you. And the third universal law is a law of cause and effect. Now, cause and effect means that for every cause, there's an effect. And for every effect, there's a cause. Every cause results in an effect. If we want something, there has to be something that gets that in motion. The effect is the result. The effect is that thing that we desire. The effect is the end game. In order to get that end game, there has to be something that's put into motion to create that. The same thing when we have, you know, when we do something, it's going to create an effect. So when we make a decision today, I'm going to eat that full cheesecake. It's going to have an effect on me. I'm going to put on some weight. I may want health, I may want vitality, I may want the, you know, the sexy slim body, but I made a decision today that has a consequence, it has a result. If I get a bonus, you know, if we're around tax time, people might be getting tax tax refunds. Um, and it may be, you know, $1,000, it may be $20,000. What you do with that has an effect. You might think, wow, I've got $2,000, let me go to Vegas and try to multiply this. There is an effect and most likely not a very good one. Or let me go take it, take a vacation and, you know, splurge on this. I haven't been able to take a vacation because I've been broke. Or let me put this into an account for investment for my future. Let me purchase an, an asset that will multiply for the future versus, oh, let me go buy a liability, let me go buy a new car, or let me put a down payment on a car and now I'm making payments and owing you know, money for the next three to five years. And so for every action we take today, we have to be responsible. And this goes to another concept that I teach is you have to be 100% responsible for your life and for your results. 100%, meaning that everything I do has an effect. Everything I, everything that is in my life, I'm in control of, meaning I may not be in control of the weather. I may not be control in control of the market or the president or my boss, but there are things that I can control. I can control my attitude around it. I control, control what I do about it. And I control my behavior, my thoughts around it as well. My behavior, my thoughts, and my attitude. What am I going to focus on? Am I going to focus on 
what the the fact that I'm a victim and I'm stuck and there's no way out or am I going to focus on the fact that oh okay you know the the weather is bad maybe I need to work out in a different place or the economy crashed okay where can I take opportunities so that I can still be abundant moving forward I remember um I had I had just purchased an investment property and it was an investment property that required a lot of work. Great investment. And I, so we were kind of slowly asking the tenants to leave. And there was this one tenant that um, she was very reluctant to leave. And she said, well, I wish you had told me because I got a tax, you, because I don't have money to, to, and I was offering her money to move. I, I said, oh, uh, she said, I wish you had told me because I don't have money to move to pay the first month's rent and, you know, deposit and, and all of that stuff. You know, I wish you had told me earlier because I just, um, it was like last month or two months ago, I got my tax refund, but I already spent it. And so I don't have the money right now. And what I thought is, wow, you made a decision you made you got this money and you know might have been a few thousand dollars and instead of putting it towards your life and your future you just blew it and and i bet she couldn't even tell you what she spent it on probably just extra clothes and extra food and you know a lot of junk that she'd probably have to get rid of you know in her home and so she made a decision and now she was faced with a choice and it was a very tough choice for her you know, we 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 see all of these emergencies, you know, I mean, I've, I've had to replace roofs and water heaters and tires and get my car fixed. And pe most people will freak out over those things. Oh, there's you know, these inconveniences there. These are emergencies. No, no, no. This is this is what you plan for. This is what you plan for. And so cause and effect in the in the world of manifesting and law of attraction is we actually ask ourselves. Is this step, is this move, is this thing I'm about to do moving me closer to my goal or away from my goal? Is it moving closer to my vision or away from my vision, closer to my dream or away from my dream? And making sure that every step we move moves in the direction of our dream. Every step we take moves us in the direction of that thing that we desire. So there is a lot of accountability, self-accountability. When I go to make breakfast or when I go to make lunch, is this meal moving me towards health and vitality and wellness and living to be 125, which is my dream, my goal? Or is, it, is this going to give me energy? Or is this going to make me feel like, you know, like wanting to lay on the sofa and do nothing for the rest of the day? Is this going to give me, you know, vitality or is going to, you know, give me that afternoon slump? So making those decisions, I, I bring in a, an amount of money. It does, you know, you may want to be a millionaire. It doesn't mean the millionaires, the million dollars is going to come tomorrow. But what you do with that dollar today is going to determine the chances of you becoming a millionaire. What you do with that, you know, that choice of spending you know, $8 on, you know, a little snack is going to determine what your chances of becoming a millionaire are, whether or not you save, you know, that money or invest that money, or, you know, choose the right person in your life, or, you know, all of those decisions, we make 1000s of decisions a day. And so cause and effect requires us to be conscious of our decisions because most people don't create, they react. Meaning whatever comes at them, they've got a natural reaction. What does reaction mean? We're acting again. Re, right? Redo means to do again. Rewrite means to write again. React means to act again. We're acting in the same way that we've been acting in the past. What is that? What is that going to do? That's going to create more of what we've created in the past. If we want something new, we have to respond to things differently. And the ideal way is to create, meaning we're not waiting for life to happen. We're making life happen. 
We're creating what we want and we're setting things in motion. So we have to be very clear on what we want. We have to be very clear on asking ourselves, being aware of, am I taking action in the direction of my dream today? What are those steps I can take today to move myself in the direction of my dream? No more victim, full on victor. Be at the cause, level of cause, not the effect. Be very clear that we're always moving. And there's another point I wanted to bring up around pivoting. That's what it is. You know, when it requires us to be very conscious because we're going to get feedback from the universe. We're going to get feedback and the feedback might be, mm, maybe this isn't right for you. Maybe you need to turn left instead of right. Oh, there's a roadblock. This person that you thought you were going to spend the rest of your life with, you know, just betrayed you or doesn't want to be with you. Okay, pivot. I'm not going to force anything that the universe is showing me is not right for me. Now, that doesn't mean when things get hard, we check out. Most people think, oh, this isn't working. So I guess the universe doesn't want it for me. No, we're not, we're not making up excuses. I'm talking when there's a real clear dead end. Um, we don't quit when, when we're, when it's hard. We don't quit when it's hard. And so we're constantly evaluating. Now the bonus that I wanted to add is the universe is not a genie. I know this is like hard for me. I'm when I first learned the law of attraction, I'm like, wait, the universe is my genie. Everything I want, I can have. And what I've learned, and, and, and I think it's become more prevalent as I've, I've, as I've aged and um, I've experienced those, you know, there's, there's an old song. I mean, I guess old for me because, you know, decades. It's a country song, like, thank God for unanswered prayers. And so I don't know if you guys have, have heard of that. You know, it's where this, this guy is, is thinking, you know, he's at a reunion and he sees this woman that he thought, you know, was the one and he was praying God to give her to him. And God said, no, you know, and, and he was married and he married someone else. And he's like, thank God for unanswered prayers because I'm so happy with my new love. And you have to kind of go through life to figure that out. And I've had enough life to realize that there were things that I so wanted and I was so like, clear on and the universe had other ideas for me and looking back oh my god I couldn't have dreamt of the life I'm living right now I couldn't have dreamt that and so thank god I was diverted and so we have to leave room you know when I have my clients write their vision which is you know Day one, they're writing their vision. I always have them end with this or something even greater for the highest good of all concerned. And what that's done for me, it's allowed me to not be attached to the results. I'm 100% committed. I'm 100% committed to what I desire. I'm 100% committed to my goals, to my dreams, but I'm not attached. And there's a freedom in that. And the and And I'll tell you, not only is the freedom to know that God, the universe, you know, has my back and has something better planned for me, because I've seen evidence of that. I've seen plenty of evidence that what 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 the universe took away that I thought I couldn't live without, I could live and I'm living a better life without that. Not only did I learn the universe has a better plan for me, but I've learned that Universe is something better for me. Absolutely. So when things don't work out, there's a relaxing in me. I don't panic. There's no more anxiety. There's no more like, you know, I grieve, but I give myself a really short time to grieve. When, when I had to shut down a business, which was a huge public failure for me, um, and this was about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, for two weeks, I cried and walked on the beach. And then after two weeks, I'm like, all right, what's next? I mean, I allowed myself to grieve when I've had my heart broken. I've cried. I've boohooed. Nothing wrong with crying. I cry a lot. Um, and I allow myself to cry. And then I'm like, all right, what's next? And, and so there's this 
knowingness and this relaxation that, okay, I can trust. There's freedom in knowing that you could just trust and let go. I don't have to control everything. It is tiring to control everything. And it doesn't work so well because when we try to control, we're controlling from our ego. So I have my very clear vision. I have my very clear dream. And then I just let go. And God has its timing. The universe has its timing. And, and, and going back to the law of assumption, you assume it's going to be there. You're not worried about timing. You're not worried if it, you know, could be today, could be tomorrow, could be three years from now, could be seven years from now. But the law of assumption isn't worried about that because you assume it's already there. You know, when a woman's pregnant, you don't worry, you know, is the baby still there? Is the baby still there? Yes, the baby's still there. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you, my big lesson about dreaming and manifesting and where I really had to learn to be patient was when I was pregnant. Because I was nine months pregnant and then like a week later, you know, my son was still too comfortable to come out. <laughs> and um, I had this crazy thought and I kept thinking, oh my God, what if this baby never comes out? I mean, like just the sheer thought of that is just crazy, right? But, you know, we, I had that crazy thought of what if he never comes out now? The realist would think that's impossible. You're pregnant. There's a baby in there. He's going to come out. Like, just, just be patient. And that's what really taught me to be patient with my manifestation is there's no time limit. We're human. We get impatient. But I, I, I've learned to let go more and more every day. And that's given me, again, the sense of trust and freedom and flow and openness to dream more because there's not an attachment. When we attach... What happens is my happiness is based on that thing coming. And so I'm waiting. First of all, waiting begets more waiting. You can never attract what you're waiting for. I'm waiting for something that I want. And I'll say, I'll be happy when I move into that house. I'll be happy when I meet the love of my life. I'll be happy when I'm a size two. I'll be happy when I hit my multi-millions. I'll be happy when I've got my private jet. I'll be happy when I've, you know, X, Y, Z. And, and that puts the power on that thing. You've lost your power at that point. You've lost your power. So we take back our power by being in flow, by being free, and by being in the present moment. Because the universe only acts in the present moment. The subconscious only knows the present moment. So when I go to dream and create a vision, I have to be in the present moment. What do I feel like being a multimillionaire? What do I feel like being with the love of my life? What does it feel like to be in my home? How can I create those feelings now? You know, I, I, I could be living in a shack, dreaming of a big home. I'm gonna make that shack as beautiful as possible. And I, I remember when I lived in a, you know, tiny apartment, it was a condo where I made it beautiful dreaming of my big home until I created my big home. So I made that my dream. And because it was so clearly my dream, I outgrew that. And the universe naturally gave me a bigger home that could fit who I had become where I was vibrating at, because I was vibrating at opulence and luxury and beauty, even though, you know, I had this really tiny, you know, shack. So we want to let go. We want to let God, we want to allow room for greater than us, than this, this small part of, of who we are and connect with that bigger part. So I want to end there and I would love to open up to any questions, comments. How can I serve you? This is your chance to get live coaching um, from me here. Just unmute yourself and start talking. I was saying that I appreciate hearing you speak the truth of the universe. It's always a good reminder. Yeah. And I don't know that I have a specific question, except I want to acknowledge my humanness and the part that seems to get in the way. 
or maybe my impatience because I want it now. Mm. Or, you know, even yesterday would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not really a question, but good stuff and um, things to think of, things to be reminded, and again, things to focus on. Yeah. And, and I really appreciate you saying that because yeah, that that's, that's a difficult thing for us is, is impatience. And, um, and I'll tell you, we lose time by being impatient. It, it, it's, it's an odd concept, but we lose time by being impatient because we're so projected out to into the universe or sorry, into the future, that we're not living in the moment and we're not connected to what we can do in the moment. And, you know, I've, I've, I've said this a lot of times, I've been obsessed with the series, The Chosen. If you haven't watched it, watch it. And, you know, Jesus, like throughout all the episodes, you know, someone will ask him, well, when are we going to take over the Romans? When are we going to revolutionize it? When are we? And he's all soon. Oh, I mean, not take over the Romans, but when are we going to like, blow up our mission and build our, you know, build our ministry. And he's like, soon, when are we going to go here soon? And everyone's like, what is that? What is it with that word soon? <laughs> it's like, you know, and so it's, it's just letting go. And, and it is, it's, it's, we have to remind ourselves, we have to remind ourselves. And so I, I, how I do it for myself is I have to give myself time to come back to the present moment. It's come back to now, you know, I could be thinking, I don't have this yet. I want this. I, you know, I wish I had, you know, it's not here yet. Come back to now and ask myself, what am I grateful for now? What do I have that gives me evidence that I'm on the right path? You know, I, I have a roof over my head. I have electricity that shows me I'm wealthy. I have food on the, you know, in their fridge. I have all my bills are paid. I am wealthy. I'm wealthy. And what can I do now to create more wealth? First, I want to appreciate what I have and what we appreciate appreciates. So then we open up to, wow, I'm so rich. I, I can, richness is easy for me. I can create more. I'm so healthy. I'll tell you, you know, I've, you know, I've been up and down in my weight as most of us women have. And, and I, when I blow it in the morning, like I've had a donut and, you know, sweets or something, I'm like, oh, forget. And I blow it the rest of the day. I'm like, I already blew it in the morning. Might as well have, you know, this burger and fries and, you know, ice cream for dessert. It, it's whatever energy we start with, that's the energy we continue with. So if we can recognize what's good, what's here already come back to the present moment, appreciate it, and then look at how can I create more? Then it gives you that sense of it's happening now. It's happening now. I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait. So it is a practice. Thank you for, sh for sharing the realness of it because it's very real. And as human beings, you know, we're, we're impatient, but that that's truly the key. One of the things, and I'm Thank curious you. you have to say about this, one of the things is that, have I gotten used to this contentment-wise? Or have I settled into who I'm going to be or who I am, regardless of where that body lives? Because my surroundings don't define me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can decide who you are in any surrounding, like you said. Yeah, they don't define who you are, but does, does you decide who you are and you define your surroundings. So if you want, you know, a beautiful open space with lots of lighting, wherever you're at now, create it, make it beautiful, make it open space. Bring some lighting, even if you have to bring fake lighting because you're living in a dungeon, you know, I mean, it's possible wherever you're at. And so, yes, not connecting to to that outside thing. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Irene says, watching with Jeff and the baby. Oh, I totally agree with the conscious spending. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. If you want true wealth, 
there has to be a, a level of conscious spending and and really knowing you know i i was doing the millionaire inner circle is any of that public no none of that is i think that's all for private clients but there's a lot of great concepts that i talk about I'll, maybe i'll bring that here and share some ideas um around conscious spending around conscious spending there there's a great book i read years ago called understanding poverty and there was lots of tables where they they had a column for poor people, middle class, and, and the wealthy. And then all of these things um, and how they each respond differently. And one of them is, you know, when paycheck comes, what do the poor, middle class, and, and rich people do differently? The poor people go out and spend. They 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 buy that that the fancy shoes, the new iPhone, they, you know. Whether and I remember I used to I used to teach high school in in an inner city school, and my kids had like better shoes, bags, phones than I did, and I'm I'm like you know a six figure teacher. I mean it was just crazy. I'm like you know I know you know your parents aren't working or or you know they're they're struggling or you know how are you, how do you have the new air jordans and those kinds of things so that's what poor people do middle class they um, pay all the bills and they spend what's what's left the rich people invest first and then they pay the bills and the spending comes really after their money's making their money you know there there's there's also another thing where um, what happened? How how is money related to like friends and family? For poor people, there's this expectation that if one person in the clan or the neighborhood has extra money, they have to share it with the neighbors, or they have to share it with the cousins, or they have to loan it to mom, grandma, cousin, nephew, all that stuff. So they move money around just to keep people, you know, to the basics. Um, middle class will will loan money to you know to family um, after a lot of scrutinization and don't quote me on this it's been like 10 years since I've read this and then the the rich will only invest and loan when there is a guaranteed return you would think that you know it's like I got a this rich, rich uncle why won't he loan me five thousand dollars that's nothing for him that's why that's why. And I know a lot of people who 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 are floored by that. You know, you're more likely to get a loan from your middle class cousin than you are your rich cousin. Now, will they give you money if you're really close? And, you know, I mean, there's obviously relationships that that's that go beyond that. But there's definitely rules and patterns and habits of the poor, the middle class, and the wealthy. So I suggest it, it's kind of geared more towards education, but I suggest if you could pick it up, look at it. Because like I said, you know, when you want to get on the same vibration as wealthy people, they they don't do things the way we think. I've been around very wealthy people. And in my mind, I used to think that they just buy whatever they want and they blow their money and they're, you know, giving out a hundred dollar, you know, tips here and there. And they don't, it's the opposite. They're very frugal, not cheap, not cheap of frugal. And their priority is making their money work for them. Now they buy finer quality things. So, I mean, there's a lot we can go on and on about that. So yes, conscious spending, conscious spending. Awesome. Any other questions or comments? Just to comment, I liked what you said about the pivoting and um, that it's not quitting when things get, uh, you know, really hard. And um, sometimes we have to experience that multiple times before we really oh. learn that lesson. But um, my husband and I were very goal oriented and goal focused. And we decided that um, we wanted to, we had a starter house and we saw another house that we really, really liked. And so it was a little bit above our budget. So we were trying to scheme and figure out, well, maybe we could sell this. We could work some overtime. We could do this. We could do that. And we kept going back and looking. And finally, the um, developer sat us down and he said, listen, kids, 
because we, we were younger then. And he said, you don't want to have a house that it takes everything that you that you have to support it. You don't want, you'll start resenting it because you can't go out to dinner when you want to, you can't um, take a vacation. It will become a burden and this is not the house for you. And so we reluctantly agreed and then we, we went on and um, two years later, that house went down the hill in a mudslide. And so we were like, oh my God, the universe was putting those roadblocks in our way because there was something better for us. And, um, you know, but at the time it just looked like roadblocks and I felt like a failure because I couldn't make it work. But, you know, we pivoted and everything worked out, but it's always in hindsight that you can see it and appreciate it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I yeah. love that. Thank you for sharing. Yes. It's all hindsight. And unfortunately, you know, it takes that, it takes that um, experience to understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, I now the trusting. first time I get a, a roadblock, I say it sends up the red flag and it's like, okay, if I get another one or two of these, mm -hmm. this is not for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. Yes. I love that. I love that level of trust. I love that level of trust. Yes, that's what it takes, guys. That's what it takes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? All righty. Well, so blessed to have you here. Thank you for joining me. I love doing these. I love sharing. I love hearing your comments and your questions. And if you guys keep showing up, I'll keep showing up. So please keep showing up. So I'm not here all by myself. <laughs> um, and please message me or, you know, put a little comment on Facebook if there's anything in particular you're curious about or want me to talk about or explore, um, please let me know. I want to know what, what you want to learn. And um, we'll see you, I think we're back here April, beginning of April or something. Um, so lots of love. We'll see you all soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.